Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Brent Moulton with the National Inspection Academy. And today we're sitting down with Eddie from NDT Heroes. And we're just gonna kind of have a little bit of shop talk and uh, talk about each of our businesses and kind of what the future holds for our personal companies as well as the industry. So Eddie, what's new with NDT Heroes? Brent, well, lots of cool things are new. I tell you that it's been it's been a great year so far. My intention this year is to get more collaborative, and I think that's starting to happen. You know, I'm getting some folks who are reaching out to me saying, "Hey, I like what you're doing. I want to help out. I want to do some things with you," and and that turns into not just friendships, but I mean, some folks just donating some money towards a cause. Right? It allows me to do some things, put some things out there with some folks, maybe even buy some equipment that I'm looking to get some samples, things like that. So that's kind of the biggest thing for me is I'm just it's starting to get some real, I guess, grassroots, you know, commitment from folks. And that's pretty exciting. I think that's what I'm probably most excited about right now is just getting that feedback from people. I know that, you know, we're here to have a conversation. So obviously I want to know what's going on, on your end too. Yeah. So I guess big news on my end with the National Inspection Academy, we finally got our Minnesota education license. Okay. So that that was a milestone. So now since we're licensed, we can get different state grants since we are a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, that's really the big push for us lately. And, you know, we did receive our first grant through SourceWell, which, you know, as I'm sure you're aware of, the, the biggest hurdle that we face is awareness to our industry. So part of the grant that we were rewarded was the ability to do marketing and not so much as marketing about our school, but marketing towards the trade itself. Okay. So some of those funds went to the Moorhead Career Fair that Mm -hmm. NIA was at. And that was awesome being able to, you know, show off the different techniques of NDT to the high schoolers, you know, and just kind of get the, get that spark going, you know, and I'm sure you've seen that before with all the, the work that you have done. But yeah, when you can really just, you know, sit down, explain the science behind our techniques and just kind of see that little glimmer of hope in their eyes and be like, man, this is super (laughs) cool. I can do this for a career. Yeah. I'm sure that's what keeps us both going. I mean, it, I mean, it really does, Brent. I mean, it's, and it's just those few, it doesn't take many, right? It just takes one or two to trigger that and make you go like, man, this is really cool. This is why we do this. You know, I met a kid last night, I was teaching a class. I met a student and he, he recognized me, recognized each other. So he's a junior at the high school that I volunteer with. And I said, Hey, we got some great things coming this year. And you just see his eyes like, okay, I'm ready. So I'm trying to charge him up. Maybe he'll tell his classmates over the summer. Hey, you know, Mr. Pump has got some things going on over there. So yeah, but that's, that's, it's exactly like you said, right? And it's cool that you did that. It's, I'm happy for you, right? That you got that approval that you needed to be a licensed educator. I think that's one area that I'm going to start to really try to understand better for support of the high school and for the, and for the college and things like that. I mean, there's some other educating things I'm doing as well with other programs, but yeah, that's cool. I'm happy for you, man. Yeah. You know, it, it really comes back to like, whether it's a good or bad thing, the folks here at the National Inspection Academy, we are NDT first, mm-hmm. and we're just some techs that decided to start a school. So <laughs> our training is awesome, but some of the behind the scenes, the the legal issues, you know, that's where, yeah, I'll, I'll admit, you know, we kind of struggle a little bit with yeah. it, but we're focused so heavily on NDT that we've actually turned to some of our board of directors and some other folks to help us on, you know, the legal aspects and all the stuff that goes into being a licensed educator. So that way we can focus on, you know, just providing that, that quality NDT training, but yeah, man, it's fun. And we've been teaching a lot, just finished up a rad safety course and an ultrasonics one. So yeah, it's been, it's fun. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like fun. And it's like you said, though, we like to do, I think I find that in other areas too. other folks like yourself that are so passionate about what, what we do and we need to find help, right? And that collaboration plays in, you got to find somebody who can help you with the other things in this case, whether it be legal or, or whatever it may be that can help us mm-hmm. navigate those things. So yeah, that's cool. It's good that you have the resources there for that. Oh yeah. Yeah. We have a, a great team behind us. 
so yeah, Eddie, that is kind of like what we're currently up to. Do you have any future plans next three, five, 10 years for either your business or just your personal hobbies? Uh, I'd love to be able to do a little more traveling. I'd like to be able to get out and do some of these events. I know these STEM events that we do with ASNT is nice. I enjoy those. You know, I enjoy talking to the kids and getting out there with these students and doing some things. And, you know, fortunate to have the opportunity to do two elementary schools this year, which was great. And and then I've got a high school that I'm going to speak with in August or September of next year. So those are the kind of things that I've, you know, if you look at my website, you'll see there's a place to like a speaker tag, right? If you need me to come speak to the students or the counselors, those are the kind of things I like to be able to do. And, and, and it can be local, right? Relatively local, whether they be in Texas or anywhere else. But those are the kind of things I'd like to be able to do in the next three years. Yeah, I'll actually be down in Atlanta, Georgia with ASNT out of the Faces of NDT program. And I don't know if anybody's aware of Skills USA. Mm -hmm. I have never heard of it until I went to my first convention last year. But man, that is some of the coolest things. It's a competition that is nationwide. And then like you'll be the you know, the first place of the state and then the states go to national and down in Atlanta is the, the place for the nationals. And it's wild because they have everything from welding competitions, which you know, our booth is next to yeah. even to like cosmetology, diesel mechanics. I've seen like it networking, and oh, wow. super cool thing. So yeah, I'm really stoked that ASNT, you know, holds a booth there every year. And it's definitely the highlight of my, you know, my summers to go to those things. And uh, yeah, yeah, just get to meet a bunch of people and also just to walk around and see what, what other folks are doing. Yeah, that is kind of cool, right? I mean, mine was my first opportunity was last year. It was a counselor's convention of some sort. I can't remember the name, but it was a counselor's convention. And that was fun. I enjoyed it. And so I'm looking forward to this year also. I think it may be the same event, just different location. So I'm looking forward to, like you said, walking around, checking things out, bringing some new technology, some different test methods to show them. So that's another part that I'm kind of excited about, you know, and, and that's what I told my wife. You know, if I can do some of these things, I'll take my own time. I'll take a vacation day or weekend and, and head, head down and do these things. You know, it's kind of funny. The disappointing thing for me is that I will get there a little late. I was hoping to be there at the event on time, but I've got some personal things going on. So you know, like a nerd fashion, right? Going to be so disappointed you don't get to go work over the weekend and do some STEM events. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's how that's how it goes. But hey, we'll both be in Las Vegas this year for the ASNT annual conference at the end of October. So that's, that's the big one on my calendar that I'm excited <laughs> about. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that one as well. I received the notification that I was receiving a mentorship award. So I'm looking forward to getting that and see how that goes. That's awesome, Eddie. Congratulations for that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, when I think of great mentors and stuff, I mean, you're up there, man. It's just really cool with all the work you've been doing and, you know, just your your approach angle. I, I really mm -hmm. like that. And it seems to resonate with the industry. I, I see your engagements on LinkedIn. So you're yeah. you're doing something right. Well, you know, it all starts somewhere. It didn't start with me and we can always go to someone else, but you know, I looked at Paul, looked at Emily and saw what they're doing. And, you know, it's like you said earlier, right? You got to just have fun with this. You got to do it, you know, push yourself a little bit and get out of that comfort zone and just, you know, see what happens. And that's kind of what you guys did with your school there, right? You talk about just a bunch of guys who wanted to serve the industry mm -hmm. and you're doing your thing. And then, well, now we got to figure out the other side of it, the back end of it. Well, you'll figure it out and it'll oh, be yeah. just fine. But it, <laughs> but, it, but you got to yeah. start, you got to start pushing it. Yep. Yeah. You got to step out of that comfort zone, you know? Yeah. But so any, anyways, Eddie, kind of shifting gears here a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, what is kind of looking back? Cause you've been in the industry, if I'm not mistaken, like 20 years, 20 plus years, mm, a little higher than that. Maybe like 35, looked at the other day, 34 years, 34 years, I know. <laughs> 34 years. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. What? So within that time range, what is some of the the highlights or what's some of the cool stuff that you were able to inspect or what's a, what's a good story? Good story. Well, my, I guess some of the coolest things I'll have to say is probably just looking at astronaut gear, right? Looking at hard like clothing, you know, we were just talking to the lady upstairs a minute ago, how sometimes they lose a needle. Well, the best way to find that needle is to x-ray it, right? Bring it downstairs, put some film behind it, see where it's at. 
And so there's those things, and they're fun. That's kind of neat to say you've done that. Probably the strangest thing I always tell people is is to inspect the the solid waste that comes from space station, right? A few year, years ago, there was a concern about the waste component being performing correctly. And if you don't know, maybe you don't, maybe you're too young to know this, Brent, but a diaper genie, if you know what that is. But, you know, these things are designed to compact the waste and they put them in little baggies and things like this. Well, this is what this was. It resembled a, one of those cassettes you get at the bank, you know, where you put your money in and it takes a shoot and shoots it back. Well, that's what this looked like. It was yep. a cylinder, a cylinder, and the waste was going in here and it's being compacted. The issue they had was that it wasn't compacting correctly. It was skewing one way or the other. And so we had to x-ray that. And when I heard that I was going to be doing this, I thought to myself, oh, my goodness. I'm going to be t- touching feces. What if there's a leak? What if I have, ah, you know, I was disgusted by the idea. I, we did it, you know, and it, was, it wasn't as bad as, you might, as we might have thought. It was not bad at all. But, but that was probably the most strangest, most memorable moment I can think of when I actually had to perform an inspection on astronaut waste. And so, yeah, I did. And, and so what's cool about that, too, is I actually wrote a little article about this. I think it's in Quality Magazine. And the, the crazy thing is, is I didn't have the film anymore. Right? I think I may have even give it back to them. I may not even had copies of it. And so I had to render the draw, I had to draw it and from, you know, from memory what this thing looked like. So that's my contribution, right? My artistic bent blended into the realistic side of it and created this, you know, put this story together and put it out there the same way I'm sharing it here with you. But yeah, that's probably the most yeah. entertaining and interesting story I can share about anything I've inspected. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I've definitely, I've done radiography at water treatment plants, but yeah, I would say that's a, that's a level up <laughs> from what I've done. <laughs> no, that's cool. You, you know, one of the, the best times that I've had, and I've shared this on various podcasts, but I was doing a thermography at distilleries throughout the East Coast. And okay. it was just a real cool thing where my coworker and I jumped in the rental car and we made a stop in Chicago, Baltimore. We dropped down south somewhere in Mississippi and just made a huge lap throughout okay. all the eastern states. And it was just one of those cool things where going into these distilleries and while you're inspecting the three-phase electrical, you know, we're not electricians. So we were escorted by electrician. They were opening up the cabinets. You know, they were doing all the, the heavy lifting. And all that we were doing is viewing this panel through our thermal lens okay. and looking for hot spots on knife blade disconnects, fuses. And it was an easy task to perform. But the ability to go to all of these really unique locations throughout the East Coast, yeah. you know, just, you know, for me, it was almost like just a, a personal road trip or a little yeah. vacation with some work thrown into it. So, yeah. yeah, it was just really fun. And it's something that, you know, people don't really necessarily think of that when they think about NDT jobs or, yeah. you know, roles that you may be participating in is like, oh. Going to distilleries, I guess those need to get inspected too. You'll yeah. never run out of new things. No, that's true. That's true. And that's great to have that kind of exposure, to do something like that, right? And it can be fun, right? This work doesn't have to be stressful. I mean, they have stressful moments and there's no doubt. And we all have to deal with that from time to time. You know, who wants to reject something and tell somebody that it didn't meet code? But there are times like this where you get a chance to go tour the countryside, do some, you know, quick inspections, maybe, you know, enjoy yourself while you're there. That's great. You want to be able to do that. And I think the, I think people in this industry are okay with that. We understand that you're going to have to take some of that downtime and, and enjoy yourself. So no, that's cool. That's kind of a neat experience for you. And, and like I said, road trips are always fun. So, you know, kind of, as I mentioned before, this industry, it, for some reason, it suffers with people not being aware of it. The work that we perform People just don't think about like going to school for an NDT inspector, you know, it's just not something that's on the forefront of people's minds. How did you get into the industry? Like, how did you become aware that this trade even exists? Um, Well, for me, it was weird because I came in as a machinist. I had 
just finished my associate degree in electronics. So I was prepared to go get a job in IT because that's what it was out there. And, you know, they interviewed me and wanted me to come in as a machinist. But I was machining samples, flaw samples. That's what my job was. I didn't know that I was doing it for NDT. I just knew I was putting cracks inside these panels. Later on, I got introduced to it that, that they were doing some, you know, eddy currents and liquid penetrant and things like this. I still didn't know what it was. But that's basically how I got introduced to it. It was a machining, but my machining background. And to kind of go to what you're saying, right, now, people don't understand what this is about. And, and that's what we're here to do, right, is to share what these what our industry touches, what we work with, but it, but you keep an open mind and do those, just keep an open mind towards it and, and you'll be impressed. But yeah, I know I'm kind of maybe going off a little bit on that, but yeah, that's how I got into it though. I was a machinist, had a, a nice opportunity for the lab manager to let me sit in on a class. I sat in on eddy current class and because I had just finished my degree in electronics, you know, eddy current electronics, I mean, all the terminology is there. So I had some good questions. I was engaged. And he says, you know what, go ahead and stick around, you know, you can take the whole class. Because I think initially it was just going to be, hey, sit in as much as you can. And once I got done with half a day, he says, just forget about any machining the rest of the week. Just sit in and enjoy the Eddie Current class. And then from that point on, he just said, hey, green lit me for all the classes I want to take. So now I'm taking MAG, taking PT, taking UT, radiography. And then the rest just kind of rolled out from there. So I really have to give him credit. I think, you know, ASNT had put out something on LinkedIn about giving credit to those who come, you know, you'd like to recognize in your past and Charles Sikowski is that man that I would have to give tribute to my a tribute for my career is that guy you know he was just a great influence on me and supporter of what I wanted to do and you know it's clear indication and like you said it too right you see the glimpse in people's eyes and, and maybe he saw something in me that said hey this guy has something going on here and 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 that's what happens right you get somebody who has an interest and sees some and he saw enough in me to go ahead and give me the opportunity you know, if I can expand on it, one other detail that I think is important, I like to share with people and I share with all the kids that I see is that, you know, the soft skills are very important to us. We don't often think about it. We might think about, hey, I want to be the best, you know, radiographer. I want to be the best ultrasonic inspector. And that's great. And we can. His words to me were anybody can be the technical expert. It's anybody can do it. How well you communicate that. How effective are you at sharing that knowledge, that information? If you can't do that, then it's wasted, right? You might be the best person to answer the question, but nobody's listening. So, you know, those are some of the, the I guess, that pearl of wisdom that I have to say I give 100% to him. And, and it's, you know, it's paying forward, right? Give people the same opportunity I've been given and, and to feed their families and things like that. And I don't know, I go on and on, but yeah, that's, that's it. And I, and so like for you, right. So to answer, to ask you the same question, right. How did you get into this? Well, I got to touch on those, that soft skill because uh. you were, you were preaching exactly what I always say to people is that it really comes down to being reliable, consistent. Mm -hmm. And the a really big one is playing well with others. True. Because you're always got coworkers. If you're working road jobs, those coworkers are going to become your family, whether you like it or not. Yeah. So having that good attitude and just being that person that other people want to be around and all of the, you know, the UT skills and being a good radiographer, all that stuff will come. Yeah. But ha going into it with a good attitude is going to put you so far ahead of someone that people just don't want to be around because maybe they're negative or whatever the case may be. So I love it. I preach that to all of my students as, hey, anybody can be successful in this industry. It really comes down to your attitude. And that that goes so far. Well, and like what you, what you just said, right? Think about it. How do you get to be a better radiographer or better technician? If you don't know how to talk to people, you're not going to get that help, right? If you can't be nice to the guy or the gal who's ahead of you, and they're not going to want to help you. So you have to be able to relate to people and, and talk to people. Otherwise, you're never going to progress. 100%. But yeah. yeah, going back to the original question, though, like how I got into NDT is that when I was in like middle school, my older brother was looking at going to Ridgewater in mm -hmm. Hutchinson, Minnesota, and they have a NDT associates program there. 
And, you know, it was the dinner table discussions of, you know, what the heck is NDT? And, and really, in, in my child's mind, I just kind of figured it was, you know, X-ray and welds. You know, that's that's as far as I went with it. But then, yeah, just later on, going through high school, like, I always joke with folks that, you know, I was like the skateboard punk doing kickflips down four stairs, you know, like <laughs> I didn't want to be in high school. <laughs> you know, that's the last place I wanted to be. And it really wasn't because I wasn't bright. It's just that it didn't hold my attention. Yeah. So, you know, to to the disbelief of some of my teachers, I did graduate <laughs> <laughs> and I worked in a warehouse for like 10 years, maybe yeah, maybe not that long, but, you know, being a warehouse manager, I bought my first house, you know, and I was, I was doing all right, but I was like, man, there, there has to be more to life than this. Yeah. And that's really where I really dove into what NDT actually was. And then you, you said it before, you know, like I am, I'm electronics nerd. I took every opportunity and in, in school for those electronic classes. And when I started learning about like this method called eddy current, I'm like, just like yourself, I'm like, oh, no way. All right. Conductive reactants, <laughs> impedance. I, th these are terms that I'm familiar with right. and I can go and make a bunch of money. I'm like, sign me up. So <laughs> just like yourself, you know, it was the theory behind the methods that really sparked my interest. And then from there, it blossom into everything else that that NDT is. So yeah, mm -hmm. it it's just really cool how it all ties together. Yeah, it does, right? I mean, and it's funny as you're talking, I'm thinking to myself how the theory, and I never thought of it that way, but it, it, it hits a mark with me because when I'm teaching classes, I'm not always coming from that direction. I'll say I'm teaching the theory, but I'm, but I'm more towards the practical side of what I'm trying to teach and. Anyway, it's just that thought. It's gonna, it's, it's trigger something. It's gonna, it's gonna trigger something else in my teaching. I know it will. So, <laughs> but thank you for that no, little that's uh, nugget awesome. there. Yeah. How I always talk about ID current as I'm like, at the end of the day, it's just a really fancy metal detector. <laughs> I mean, really, that's, 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 that's I, I basic. Kinda, that's, that's, that's yeah. what it is. Hey, if you have a chance, if you haven't seen it already, there's a YouTube video, the uh, world's strongest magnet. Have you seen that? Yep. Is that smarter every day? Uh, maybe. I don't know. It's a, it, the, the lab is on Florida is all I know. And they have this big, you know, electromagnet, like 40 Tesla, I think, or 45 Tesla that it puts out. Yeah, that's an impressive video. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I see that because I watch a lot of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Eddie, that that's awesome. It's just really fun to sit down, kind of just, you know, have a off the cuff conversation and see where it goes. I guess with closing, where are you currently located? What industry do you uh, currently work in? And, you know, kind of where do you see yourself going within that industry? Well, I'm here in Houston, Texas, uh, working at the Johnson Space Center. So that'll tell you it's aerospace, right? That's what I work in. You know, and of those 35 years, most of them have been spent here. I think I spent 10 years. I took a step or a dip into the oil and gas market for about 10 years, which, you know, was a great experience, man. I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of great opportunities to learn and, and work with different people. So, so I'm, you know, I'm grateful for that opportunity. Uh, but yeah, 30, but I, I'll be, you know, I'll be in aerospace probably the rest of my career. I don't see myself that in education, right? Those two uh, areas where it's probably where I'll end up being. You know, it's funny is that the, the opportunities here at the Johnson Space Center have given me uh, travel opportunities, which I fully expected when I went to oil and gas that I'd have opportunities to travel, uh, you know, wherever. The most um, glamorous trip was to Oklahoma when I was in oil and gas thinking, that's it? Nice. That's it? I mean, since I got back to aerospace, I've been to Italy, right? But anyway, that's kind of where I, where I kind of see myself as aerospace, you know, for the rest of my career mixed in with some education opportunities, uh, whether it be at the college or, at the, or elsewhere. But that's kind of it for where I plan to be. And yeah, so I'm, you, you're going to tell us where you, what you got, you know, where you're at and all the answer that same question for us, Brent. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I'm up here in Northern Minnesota. <laughs> I love it. I, I'm a Minnesotan through and through. Yeah. My accent definitely follows me wherever I go, but no, I mean, 
really for me, it's oil and gas and education. You know, it's teaching at the school here in Baxter, Minnesota. That's my full time. But then, you know, working those contract jobs when they come up, you know, working a little bit of heat exchanger inspection, okay. doing eddy current there. But yeah, I plan on sticking around Minnesota and, you know, maybe ramping up those contract, those turnarounds. But at the same time, you know, it's right now my main focus is education, teaching my students, working the classes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just still trying to, you know, provide that quality NDT training and, you know, enjoying life. So that's, that's my big focus right now is just, just enjoying the moment. But you know what, real quick, we talk about doing this as a podcast down the road and having mixed uh, sectors talking a conversation, but I wonder if people will pick up on the accents, right? You asked where we're from, but you know, you're from Minnesota. I'm from Texas. So I wonder, you know, how much people go, oh, I could tell that guy was from Texas or I could tell that guy was from up north. I just think it's kind of funny when you think about where this might go and and how that ties in. Yeah, I mean, really, when you say that, my first thought was I was I was working some turnarounds down in Longview, Texas, and it was myself and two others. So I was the Minnesotan. There was a Texan and there was a Louisiana boy. Oh, and oh man, it was <laughs> nobody could understand a word that we were saying, but we all had a good time doing those jobs. So it was, yeah. it was fun. I love, you know, the differences in people. I love it. You know, yeah. I enjoy really just, you know, asking people where they're from, what their childhood experiences were, and, you know, just really exploring people like that. And yeah, it's fun. I, I enjoy getting out and traveling the country anytime I can. Well, you hung out with some with some the, the, the Cajun folk and the Texan folk, and that's that's quite a crew you got there, buddy. It's quite a <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but anyways, Eddie, man, it's been great to catch up. I know you and I talk quite frequently and stuff, but nice to get it on uh, recording here, and yeah, just kind of see where this blossoms into and go from there. So, anyways, Eddie, it's been real, and until next time. Cheers, my friend.